In America, 2021 has been the year of the Great Resignation, otherwise known as the Big Quit. The Great Resignation, that's what some experts are calling the growing trend of workers quitting or just changing careers. All of a sudden, it seemed like everyone I know was changing jobs or stepping off the career ladder. The number of Americans quitting their job is higher than ever. In the second half of 2021, over 20 million Americans quit their jobs, creating the most significant quit rate since the government started tracking the data over two decades ago. And economists are calling this period the Great Resignation. Here's what you need to know. In a recent episode of 60 Minutes, LinkedIn's chief economist gave some insight into who exactly is exiting the workforce. She says that baby boomers are retiring early, but the majority of people participating in the big quit are Gen Z workers, people in their late teens and early 20s, and most of them are women. We can see what sectors people are quitting, retail sectors and hospitality sectors. It may not just be worth it for some folks. And so in some cases, people are quitting and they're not yet returning, they're taking a break. Americans are burnt out. I like to think of it as it's a take this job and shove it measure. It's just a sign of people saying, you know, I don't need this. Academics and economists are also connecting this phenomenon to COVID-19. The stress and burnout of working through a pandemic and the extreme fear and political polarization caused people to reevaluate their careers and lifestyle. They now want more flexibility, fewer hours and higher wages. But some just don't want to work at all. With people quitting left and right, there has been an anti-work movement brewing. And unsurprisingly, Gen Z is leading the charge. As evidence, the anti-work subreddit is one of the fastest growing groups on the platform. Last fall, it only had 150,000 members. Now, it has over 1.6 million. They have the tagline, unemployment for all, not just the rich. And they call themselves the idlers. These idlers largely believe that people should strive to work as little as possible and preferably for themselves. Many work as few hours as possible in part-time jobs in order to survive. Some take on roommates or raid dumpsters for food to reduce their cost of living. It seems like they're working awfully hard at not working. One idler was pushed over the edge and finally quit his job after his boss posted a sign telling workers they couldn't use their phones during shifts. And if they were caught with their phones, management could confiscate them. The movement can be traced back to the Marxist idea that humanity can and should evolve beyond the requirement that we work for a living. And that makes sense, considering that 64% of Gen Z would happily vote for a socialist candidate. It can also be connected to the laying flat cultural movement that is spreading like wildfire in China among 20 to 30 year olds. A movement that advocates for laying down instead of working hard. Sounds nice, huh? I wake up not worrying about work, she says. Till this fall, Tang worked at a tech firm, part of China's rat race to push the country and herself ahead. But then she decided to what the Chinese call Tang Ping, or lie flat. Lying flat is about not comparing with others, but to yourself, she says. It's about developing your own path and following your heart. However, the Chinese Communist Party is not thrilled with this new attitude, which they call Tang Ping. And in response, they've scrubbed their internet of all laying flat references and groups, and even deleted the original laying flat manifesto, which went viral last year. So what is causing this great resignation? And why is Gen Z so opposed to work? Well, psychologists have been warning employers about these sensitive and anti-capitalist attitudes for years as the world prepared for Gen Z to enter the workforce. However, COVID-19 and the government's enabling response to the pandemic has accelerated the problem. People got comfortable during the lockdowns, and they learned that in many cases, they could make more money by relying on government-funded initiatives than returning to their jobs. And still today, many continue to collect unemployment benefits rather than returning to work. It's a trend that's become so commonplace that even Elon Musk jumped in with a statement when he appeared on Joe Rogan's podcast. The, the, this notion, though, that uh, you, you, know, you can just sort of send checks out to everybody and, and things will be fine is not true. Musk asserts that many wrongly believe that the economy is a cornucopia where goods and services will simply appear, leading individuals to believe that they don't need to work or contribute to production. This interview was back in 2020. Not only have these attitudes continued, they even seem to be getting worse. FedEx reported that they are having to reroute some 600,000 packages a day due to operating with only 65% of needed staff. Schools are closing and turning back to remote learning due to a lack of teachers and administrators. 
Restaurants are moving to robot servers due to the shortage of food industry employees. And as of December, the United States had 11 million job openings, which is close to an all-time record. So the problem is not the availability of jobs. It is the dramatically changing cultural attitudes towards work and productivity. And with the baby boomers retiring in throngs, the workforce is being left in the hands of millennials and Gen Z. And it is not looking great. To stay informed, go to dailywire.com. I'm Brett Cooper. Thanks for watching.